All right, looking at a little bit of algebra now. The first question here, all right, we have all right, this is algebra question one. Give the expression 12x cubed over 4x squared without a denominator. So we want to remove the denominator from this. So I've got 12x cubed divided by 4x squared. We can divide the 4 into the 12 to become 3, and we can subtract 3 minus 2 to get 1. So it'll be 3x. All right, over 1, in which case we've removed the denominator. All right, so the next question here regards question two. Find the value of k equals to 2x plus 5 in a bracket multiplied by x minus 6 in a bracket when x is equal to negative 3. Now, I can multiply these two brackets out. Okay, so let's say I did method 1. Let's say I did method 1. I actually multiplied the brackets out first. So if that's the case, I'm going to use the method of FOIL where I multiply 2x times x to get 2x squared, and then 2x times negative 6 to get negative 12x, 5 times x, which becomes 5x, and 5 times negative 6, which becomes negative 30. So that'll be 2x squared, and negative 12 plus 5 is negative 7x minus 30. Collecting like terms. Now, negative 12 plus 5 ends up at negative 7. Now I have a function with x in it, and I'm going to now make x is equal to negative 3. So k equals 2 times negative 3 squared minus 7 times negative 3 minus 30. And that becomes 9 plus 21 minus 30 which can simplify to become 18 plus 21 minus 30, right? 18 plus 21 is 39 minus 30 comes to 9. The value of k is 9. Have a look at method 2, and maybe you prefer this method. In method 2, I am going to go straight into the original equation and change x into negative 3. Now, we should get the same solution, and if there's a problem, we need to now see what. Did we do it correctly or not? Negative 3 minus 6. Again, you can see substitution for x over there and over there as it was here. And there's the negative 3 okay, going in there. All right, so I got the negative 3s in. Using bread maths, I can see this is going to be negative 6 plus 5, negative 6 plus 5, and this is negative 9, because it's minus 3 minus 6. That's negative 1 times negative 9, so that's equal to 9. Or you can put it all in a calculator, and you'll also get to 9. From this. We can see the solutions are the same, method 1 and method 2. The next question says, Give a term equivalent, this is question three, give a term equivalent to this term, but with the denominator as simple as possible. So we want to make that as simple as possible. In other words, you could remove all of this. It's basically saying simplify. Okay. So if I want to simplify this over here, the first thing I can see is that I can factorize the numerator. Okay. And when I factorize the numerator, I can take out a common 5x. If I take out 5x, I'll be left with 1 minus 3x. Because 5x times 1 is 5x, and 5x times 3x is 15x squared and negative. That'll be my numerator rewritten as factorized form. Now, the denominator, if 
I keep it in line with the 5x like that, that's a division. So I can cancel out the 5. It can go into 10 two times. And I can cancel out the x. It will go into cube twice. I cannot attempt to break up this bracket and cancel across because this bracket is stuck together. The 1 and the negative 3 cannot move. But the 5x can cancel with the denominator because it's separate. At the top, just remember, if you do ever do something like that, that's not allowed. It has to be cancelled within multiplication principles of that. Right, so I got 10x cubed. 5 goes into 10 two times. If x goes into x cubed, x squared times, which means I'll end up with 1 minus 3x at the top and 2x squared at the bottom in the denominator. And that will be my final answer. Okay, having a look at question number four now. So this one here says, if p squared is equal to 36x squared, give an expression for p without a square root. Okay. So in other words, besides without a square root, we want to find out what is p basically. Make P the subject of the formula, solve P. If I've got P squared equals to 36X squared, and I want to get the left-hand side into P, you can see quite clearly I just need to square root it. But because it's an equation, I have to square root both sides. But whenever we square root, we must remember to put a plus and a minus, because that's a possibility. Because, remember, check our answer just to see why that's true. When, it's, when I square root 36, I get 6. So plus minus 6, x would be my solution here. The square root of 36 is 6, and the square root of x squared is x. And the plus minus just stays there. So therefore, after this says now, done, all right, I can test this and I can say, okay, well, why do we have a plus and a minus? Why not just one of them? Because plus 6x squared is going to be 36x squared. And minus 6x squared is going to be minus times a minus, which ends up as a plus anyway. It'll become 36x squared as well. So both are possibilities for solutions. So given an expression of p without a square root, we have two possible answers. p equals 6x or p equals negative 6x. All right, question number five. Rewrite the equation 2x equals k over k plus k squared to give k in terms of k, in terms of x. So, okay, so this whole thing, what we want to do is we want to make k the subject of the formula. Basically. That's what this question is telling me. So how do I get k alone on one side? equal to all else on the other side. When I've got k in the numerator and in the denominator and a squared k as well. This is how I do it, right? The first thing I'm going to do is I've got 2x equals to k over k plus k squared. And I'm going to cross multiply over here. Okay. If I cross multiply, I'm going to end up with 2x multiplied by k plus k squared and the denominator is going to disappear and I'll just be left with k on the right hand side. Now I ideally I do want to definitely find k and if I did this method okay the next thing I could do is then multiply 2x to become 2xk and 2x multiplied by k squared to become 2xk squared then I could subtract k on the left hand side and then sub factorize k from here. But then I end up with k as a possible incorrect possibility there. So I can say k equals zero or k or 2x plus k minus one equals zero. 
And if I did that, I keep k alone on the left-hand side, this is going to become 1 minus 2x. So if k is 1 minus 2x, then that might work. But is that even true? This is too long, right? Let's do a better method. I can see using factorization, I can factorize the denominator. I can take out k and it will become 1 plus k. And I'm also minimizing the possibility of making any error in this method. Okay, so this is the best method, actually. All right, so I got the factorizer denominator on the right-hand side. So 2x equals k divided by k times 1 plus k. The k's cancel. So 2x equals 1 over 1 plus k. Now I've removed the k's, at least two of them. And I'm only left with one, which makes my life a whole lot easier. I'm now going to reverse the left-hand side, and I'm going to reverse the right-hand side like that. And I'm going to subtract the one over here. So k is going to become 1 over 2x minus 1. So give k in terms of x, and this makes much more sense. k is equal to 1 over 2x minus 1. Let's go through that process, just making sure we understand that. So the first thing I do, I factorize the denominator. I cancel out the k there. See that? That's important. Leaving me with 1 plus k in the denominator. Reversing both fractions. All right. And moving the plus 1 over, becoming minus 1. Next to 1 over 2x gives me that case value there. I can make this into a single fraction if I wanted to. I could multiply this by 2x over 2x like that. It'll become 1 minus 2x over 2x, which is a possible possibility. But k is alone, which is what I wanted. So that's all good. Okay, let's have a look at question six. The pattern 5, 11, 21, 35 is given by the rule Tn equals 2n squared plus 3. What does this even mean? Firstly, if I have n, then n will equal 1, it will be 5. If n is 2, it's 11. If n is 3, it's 21. If n is 4, it's 35. So that means that T1 is equal to 5, and T2 is equal to, so this is actually Tn for each of those. Let's test if this is true for this, if it's given by this rule, okay? So if I go T1, it's going to be 2 times 1 squared plus 3, which will equal 2 plus 3, which is equal to 5. That works out. Let's test T3. Randomly, 2 times 3 squared plus 3. 3 squared is 9 times 2 is 18 plus 3 is 21. So 9 squared is, uh, 9 times 2 is 18 plus 3 is 21, and that's right as well. So it definitely works. So the pattern is given by that rule. Now let's look at the next part of this. It says show that the difference between the consecutive terms starting with the nth is 4n plus 2. All right, let's see if we can quickly check this out. Okay. So the pattern 5, 11, 21, and 35, okay, is given by the rule tn equals 2n squared plus 3. Show that the difference between consecutive terms starting at the nth is 4n plus 2. So this is the nth term. Now, do we know what and how to go from one term to the next? I am plusing 6 here. I am plusing 11 and plusing 10 here. And then I'm plusing 14 here. All right, is there any? I'm actually squaring the number in multiplying by 2 and then plusing 3. The difference between consecutive terms starting at the nth term would be as follows. 
Consecutive means right next to each other. So we know what Tn is. We need to get the next term. And the next term will be Tn plus 1. So we got to find out what is Tn plus 1, which means that we have to take that over there and make it n plus 1. Like that. Square it plus 3. And that's going to be the next consecutive term after Tn. So it says starting at the nth term, meaning that anything above the nth term is what we're looking for. I'm now going to square this. This is going to become n squared plus 2n plus 1 in one go. I'm just squaring the bracket out plus 3. And if I multiply that, that becomes 2n squared plus 4n plus 2 plus 3, which will become 2n squared plus 4n plus 5. So that's that's the next term after this one. Right at the end, after all of this is comes to the nth term, the nth plus one term, the next term would be that thing. Difference means you have to subtract it. So I need to take tn plus one and I got a minus tn. So I take 2n squared plus 4n plus 5, and I got a minus 2n squared plus 3. And that's going to get Simplified into the following plus 5 minus 2n squared minus 3. That's going to cancel out. That's going to get me 4n and 5 minus 3 is going to give me 2. And we can see that's how we get to 4n plus 2. 